The Bonneville Shoreline Trail has been under construction for 30 years. Join me, Brandon Plew, and my son Spencer as we hike the 200 mile length of the BST to learn about its past, present, and future, and explore the landscape of this boundary between the city and the wilderness. We're starting off today's trail in beautiful Mill Creek Canyon. This is a, an amazing place. And we're actually today gonna be working on a brand new section of trail and actually talking about a section that's just about to be built. So I thought it'd be a great day to bring on uh, a person who is really instrumental in, these, in, in building the trail in this area. So this is Sarah Bennett. How you doing, Sarah? I'm great, Brandon, thank you. Sarah is the executive director of Trails Utah, which is a really important organization that's helped build a lot of trail throughout the state, including a fair amount of the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. Sarah, tell me a little bit about this particular trail. We're in Rattlesnake Gulch here. There's been a trail for a long time, but what, what, did, what did you do here? Well, this original alignment is in the bottom of the gulch. There's no, not really a lot to look at down there except where you're putting your feet. Uh -huh. And it really was becoming a safety concern. Uh, you have descending mountain bikers coming off the pipeline trail, and then you've got hikers coming up with dogs and kids. So it really was starting to be a dangerous mix. And it was high on the list for the Forest Service to try to reroute this trail. And so it was sort of an easy one for us to get rolling because they had already been thinking about it. We hired a professional trail designer because we knew we were dealing with a lot of constraints in this steep gully. Then we applied for grant money and we had excellent luck with that. The Utah Outdoor Office of Recreation came in with a grant as did Salt Lake County's track fund. The county is invested increasingly in seeing these trail-based recreational opportunities get improved. That is, that's really beneficial. Not every county has that. The Correct. county government being so proactive. Was this machine built or? This is machine built. They did a really good job of making this trail not feel like a groomed trail, you know? Oh, well yes. done, yeah. it's got grade reversals, it's got a good bench cut. Uh-huh. But it doesn't feel like, you know, those flow trails that they build. Well, we knew it needed to be a shared use trail. We needed to make it fun for mountain bikers who wanted to climb this, but also try to negotiate this side slope, which as you can see, is really Real steep rocky. and rocky. This section right here, we had to use a jackhammer attachment on. So that's about, you know, a three foot long, four inch wide pounder that was able to break out a little bit of rock so that we could maintain a bench through here. Yeah. There were a lot of places along this alignment where we were really nervous that we were not gonna be able to get through rock bands. <laughs> you finished this last year? We did, we finished it uh, right, right before the snow flew in the beginning of November last year. You look at it on a map and you're like, oh, there's like 25 switchbacks on that trail. But, but uh, it is nice to be able to come up here and not be too bad of a, of a grade. Right, right. Well, we're really shooting for those grades between six to seven to 10% uh -huh. for an average. Yeah. That means you're gonna have sections that are still gonna approach 15, 18, maybe in short, really short sections, even 20% grade, but you get right back to an 8% or a 7%, so you get to rest. We ended up with about a 9.5% average. Uh, just barely. Yeah, on the, on the upper end of my comfort zone, for sure. I look up to you as one of the the real great trailblazers in this state. Um, tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get started in this whole trying to get trails done? As a kid growing up, 
uh, sort of at that wild urban interface on the slopes of Mount Olympus. So you grew up right in this neighborhood? I did. As kids, we just went off the end of the street and kind of made trails through the oak scrub and built jumps for our bikes. And <laughs> But when I went back to the street where I grew up in my 20s, it was completely fenced off. You could not step onto native ground, right? There was nowhere for kids uh -huh. to get into the woods. Getting out into the spectacular landscape that we have all around us to do some exploring, you know, discover what it's like to get lost or skin your knee or what have you. It's just an essential part of growing up. It's part of our legacy as living in the mountains and getting to be outside. I spent about a year and a half living out of my vehicle and riding trails all around the Southwest. I got introduced to communities around the West that were at this point where they were embracing trails and trying to accommodate this new type of trail use, which was mountain biking. And then 10 years later, I wrote two more books in a series called Biking America's National Parks. Hmm. You can't ride a mountain bike yeah. in national parks. <laughs> See, that seems like a short book. Right. <laughs> um, I ended up doing my thesis on bear stories because I was so interested in wildlife management at the time. That says something like something an English major would do right. in a graduate degree in natural resources, right. folklore. Having written all these books, how did that lead to actually building trails? I started thinking, okay, how about if I go the whole Wasatch Front, have a trails organization dedicated to creating trail access along the Wasatch Front because we're gonna deal with this situation of multiple agency, Oh yeah. Conflict. The quilt. Yes, the quilt, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Troy said, why stop? Why stop there? Why do regional? Go for the state. All these small communities around the state are going to be dealing with the same issue. And so Trails Utah was born out of that idea that there really needed to be an entity that could apply for grants, and bring people together, leverage cooperation, right? Our ability to write grants and win grants has leveraged a lot of cooperation, not only from land managers, but also from municipal and county governments mm. that are now starting to understand that trails are really a very popular recreational amenity. So Trails Utah then you see as a facilitator. It's not doing everything. You're not building all the trails. Our interest is getting people on trails and we want to get local user groups, uh, land management agencies, and local governments all involved in that process. You know, we really have some work to do, get everybody to the table, look at what we can do to help get the most sustainable trail alignments built and cared for into the future. We can come in and just help vision a process, um, help identify all the steps that need to take place. Uh, we, and then, you know, let them run with their own grant writing or communications with their public land manager. Your success is largely built on what is the support from the local community. Exactly. If you come in as I'm the big city Salt Lake person and you need to build a trail here and we're gonna build a trail here. Right. That's never gonna work, so. Interacting with the local energy is absolutely critical. And that's another thing that we are doing with Trails Utah. Um, we're doing it in Harriman with the Harriman uh, Hills Trails Alliance is that is a great energetic group of people but they are all busy they have other jobs mm -hmm. and they didn't want to have to establish a new 501c3 so we have brought them underneath our 501c3 umbrella yeah they're an affiliate organization so I want to do that more and more with those local pockets of people around the state I can't come in there and get all those relationships in place in you know, the appropriate amount of time. 
But what they often are missing, I guess, is what you provide is the procedures. You know how to make these things happen. They often have the enthusiasm and the ideas. So having somebody who knows that, knows those procedures really well. Uh huh. How to, how to navigate the, the, the government maze. Even if everybody is in support of a trail concept, if it's on federal property, you, it triggers NEPA. Yeah. The National Environmental Policy Act will come into play not only if it is on federally designated land, but even if federal dollars are attached to the project. You really almost have to research what is NEPA going to be looking at, what's it going to entail in this area, and are there any potential things that could really hold it up, whether that's an endangered plant or an archeological issue. Um, so I always tell people at the very quickest, once you start thinking about a trail, it's two to five years before you're gonna turn a shovel of dirt. We can really help bring, I think, a better understanding of all the steps that it takes to actually get the wheels turning on a trail project. Oh, look at that. Yep. There's the big view. All the way up Mill Creek, too. So that was quite the climb. <laughs> but uh, now it's a the trail's pretty easy. So this is one of those old pipelines then. Exactly. It's the pipeline trail. So this was one of the benched areas that previously hosted big steel pipes. But it's really, I mean, an incredible testament to how hardy the early settlers were here. I mean, they figured out they had to get the water out of the upper canyons mm -hmm. and then pipe it out. And so we've ended up with all these great bench cuts that have very low angles. So you can see over there some of the old cable. Oh, yeah. So it can be done. It can be done. So we're actually. Uh, leaving the forest here. Correct. Going on to something different. Now, the property that we're going on ahead here until very, very recently was private property. And tell us about how that was acquired. That was, a, that was a, a big coup to be able to acquire this. Once we get around the corner, there's actually two parcels that it took to build this alignment, which is one reason it's taken 25 years to make this happen. And the reason that was able to happen is that the Utah legislature has now gained an understanding of the value of trails specifically the Bonneville Shoreline Trail. And they are now allocating, or they did a one-time allocation of $5 million to help, specifically help purchase lands for the trail. So these kind of parcels that are in the way, that, that are, are in absolute, That are absolutely key. We are working to get that once again reinstated because as we move along the Bonneville Shoreline Trail alignment, there's still many parcels of private land. And those property owners need some kind of compensation, yeah. you know, whether it's a trail easement or an outright sale of their property. Buying this entire ridge is expensive. Right. But the nice, it, the nice thing about it is kind of, you know, the Bonneville Shoreline Trail was the, the reason for doing it, but the end result is we have a big piece in, of public land now. That's correct. And specifically a piece of public land that provides for that critical access, that critical recreational access. Hey, I think we can see John's house out there. Yep. Hey, John. Uh, that's where we were. So we were there on the slopes of Mount Olympus in episode 14. And, and John mentioned kind of the challenge of building the trail between there mm -hmm. and here. Right. And we have a really good view of that here. Right, we do. Bringing the trail around the other side of this ridge uh, wouldn't be too difficult. But once you get to this ridge, you can see what we're looking at here in terms of extremely steep side slopes, a lot of rock banding, then combined also with loose talus. Uh, that's a really tricky place to try to get a trail through. Tricky means expensive. Expensive, <laughs> that's right. I've learned that. It's similar to kind of what we're on now. So. Somewhat similar, somewhat similar, some of the same rock. 
Um, it would be possible to probably, you know, jackhammer a little bench through some of these bands. Uh, but then you're challenged with creating a stable bench cut on some of this really steep talus area. But as you can see right in front of us, we also are on a very steep side slope with a lot of talus. So it, work. it, it works. You can cut a bench tread on a very steep side slope. You have to have a very good trail builder and one that is very comfortable working in those kinds of conditions. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll get my butt out there to look at it on the ground. It's very difficult to judge the suitability for a bench cut from standing and looking at it uh -huh. below or even straight across. Yes, we can tell it's really steep, but uh, you really have to get on the ground. We call it ground truthing. Um, there just isn't any substitute for getting on the ground and actually seeing if that terrain can support a bench cut. Yeah. A lot of times you look at a rock face like that and you're like, that's impossible. And then you'll get out there and you'll see, oh, there actually is a ledge here that is a pretty substantial ledge right. that you can use. Right, right. And I mean, how exciting would it be yeah. to be on a trail segment that is winding its way through some of those rock formations? Yeah, that'd be cool. You know, that's super exciting prospect to me. It's more than just a moss. It's not yeah, moss. Yeah, I think it might be an areogonum. Oh, it's a spiria. Oh, really? Petrophytum, matte rock spiria. Right here we have uh, what's referred to commonly as fire chalice. Uh, also, the Latin name is Zauchinaria, which really seems like it likes to mix in with the goldenrod. Uh huh. Uh, it's a late bloomer. It's only just blooming now. And it's one of the things the hummingbirds stick around for. Yeah, you can tell ev evolutionarily that thing is designed for uh, hummingbirds. Indeed. That's, that's not a bee plant. That's a, it's nice, it's nice, especially on an exposed, kind of really deserty slope like this. It's right, nice. right. You, wouldn't, nice you wouldn't think anything could kind of flourish at this time of year on these exposures. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine people 100 years ago when they built the pipeline right. cutting through this rock. They were determined. Yeah. Oh, piece of stuff. Yeah, that's a good. That's a pretty good shaped piece of pipe. Yeah, and look at all these rivets. You know, driving those rivets in. So it must have taken water down. It looks like here. it would have gone straight down from here, but that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, just to think about the velocity of the water that would be coming out of that thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it did get. So this flag line that you can see right here achieves that grade target. That's about six, seven, eight percent average grade. Show us what's, what the plan is here for where that's gonna go. So we're coming up from the bottom right now, just beyond those two water tanks and around the front of that slope. We are currently switchbacking, coming up there. The trail will then follow a contour, coming back into this sort of treed gully, and then wrap around and cross over this sparsely vegetated slope. Go all the way back into the corner of this drainage, wrap around, come back out, and follow this flag line to where we're standing right now. We just started Got construction. Uh, right now we are on Salt Lake County open space lands. Uh, we cross on to Forest Service lands just about uh, midway on this ridge line. The length of this section of trail is gonna be about two miles. About a half a mile of it is on Forest Service property. The rest is on Salt Lake County open space. Because the trail we're gonna be taking is just gonna go straight down this hillside here. Right, that's correct. <laughs> camera's stabilizer ran out of batteries, so we're going handheld. Just at the same time as we're going down these downhill drainage paths, with very, very fine dust and pebbles, so it's a tons of fun, for sure. <laughs> okay, 
on level ground now, but yeah, I don't do enough of these. Oh, there's some of your new flags there. Yep, that's right. That's right where the new trail is going to tie into, well, connects right now with this existing user-created trail. Whenever you see a sort of a double tie like that, it tells you that this is going to be a switchback or a turn. So the plan is there's a utility road down at the bottom of the hill down there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to switch back all the way up this, this hill. That's correct. That's correct. This will be the most difficult part of this entire build is starting right at the base here where we have the steepest side slope. And that's because this was the piece of property you were able to acquire correct. And, get, and get permission to build on. Correct. There's a private parcel that extends to the north that we really identified an ideal alignment on. However, the owner of that parcel was not interested in either selling his land or entertaining a trail easement. As so, is their right. As is their right, correct. <laughs> yep. yep. All right. So this is what we're doing here. Well, it looks like you and John have roughed in the trail, so why don't we just kind of see where you're planning on going here. Okay, watch your footing. It's not always super solid right here. And don't be afraid to use our oak friends. Oh, okay. okay. Got it? Just like, uh, outright collapsed under me. Yeah, are you okay? I'm fine. The dirt's too fine. Yeah, grab onto that oak as much as you can with your free hand. There's the mini X, so we're now to the part where you've actually started construction. That's right. This is, uh, as far as we've gotten to at this point. I almost wish that they figured out how to make something that's just a little smaller. There are smaller ones, sort of what you end up, it's a trade-off where you lose some power. Yeah. And this is really a nice one here. It's a little bit bigger, the tread's a little bit wider, but it's really nice and powerful. This is one of several old limestone quarries along the foothills that were used for getting the limestone material, crushing it, using it for flux and for making cement yeah, yeah. early on. And right here we have a piece of the old rail line. Old rail. So they actually had, they had a railroad up here at some point. They did. They did. Interesting. A good view there of your of your latest accomplishment. That's, that trail was built last year, right? That's correct. We started from this side and came up into some of these lake sediment, Bonneville shoreline lake sediments were a little bit loose and yeah. har hard to deal with. But we did get an alignment in that comes all the way to this look lookout point where you're really looking right over onto I-80. And then it starts its way up. Well, we, we're going to be over there soon then. Fantastic. Let's uh, wrap this one up and then we'll head over there. Great. Let's go. Well, that was, a, that was a lot of fun, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for coming out. It's fun to show off our next project. Yeah, it's always fun to brag about your own trail so for sure but uh, we'll we'll pick up your last one there uh, another day but uh, thanks for coming out and thank you we'll talk really to you more later okay Brandon you Bye. take care <laughs>